The baseball all-star game was a product of the Great Depression. Conceived by Arch Ward, sports editor of the Chicago Tribune, the all-star game was originally supposed to be a one-time event, created to coincide with the Century of Progress exhibition in Chicago, to lift the spirits of the country. It was scheduled for a day when none of the major league teams had a game. The players were chosen by both the fans and the managers. John McGraw came out of retirement to watch over the National League squad, while Connie Mack was selected to lead the American Leaguers. The National League squad fielded many fine players, among them future Hall of Famers Bill Terry, Chuck Klein, Frankie Frisch, Carl Harborough. American League was not without its superstars either, including Lou Gehrig, Lefty Gomez, Charlie Gehringer, Joe Cronin, Lefty Grove, and of course Babe Ruth. Ruth was 38 at the time of the selection, sporting a big waistline, but he still enjoyed popularity among the fans and success at the plate. The game took place on Thursday, July 6th, at Comiskey Park in Chicago. The contest began just after 2 p.m. Bill Deneen, the veteran of the first World Series, was the home plate umpire. Bill Clem was at first, Bill McGowan at second, Cy Rigler at third. Tony Mack decided to go with the 24-year-old Yankee hurler, Lefty Gomez, to start the game. John McGraw elected to go with the 30-year-old Cardinal, Bill Hallahan. Lefty Gomez retired the side in the top of the first. Hallahan pitched a scoreless frame as well walking Charlie Gehringer, but striking out Babe Ruth and retiring the side. Lefty Gomez had a little bit more trouble in the second, giving up a back-to-back -back singles to Chick Hafey and Bill Terry. But Wally Berger grounded out into a double play, and Dick Bartell struck out. Bill Hallahan would not be so lucky. With one out in the bottom of the second, he walked Jimmy Dykes and Joe Cronin. Rick Farrell flew out, but Lefty Gomez, contributing to his own cause, single to center, knocking in Dykes. Gomez pitched one more inning in the third, retiring the side in order. This would be the end of his day as he was later replaced by General Crowder. Bill Hallahan would not get off the hook so easily. Leading off the third, he walked Charlie Gehringer for the second time in the game. Next was Babe Ruth. This time the Bambino delivered, hitting a home run to right field, first in All-Star Game history. After walking Lou Gehrig, Hallahan was replaced by Lon Warnecke of the Chicago Cubs. Warnecke got Al Simmons to ground into a double play and retired Joe Cronin on a fly ball. Both General Crowder and Lon Warnecke pitched the perfect fourth. In the fifth, Warnecke got into trouble, giving up a single to Babe Ruth and Al Simmons. But Jimmy Dykes grounded out and the American League did not score. In the top of the sixth, it was General Crowder's turn to sweat. With one out, Lon Warnecke tripled to right, and then scored on Pepper Martin's ground out. Frankie Frisch was next, hitting a homer to right and pulling the National League within one run. But that is as close as the senior circuit would get. Joe Cronin led off the bottom of the sixth with a single and advanced the second on a bunt by Rick Farrell. Earl Averill, another future Hall of Famer, pinch hit for Crowder, singling at the middle and knocking in Cronin. The American League now had a two-run lead. Lefty Grove came into pitch for the Americans in the seventh, allowing a single to Bill Terry and a double to Pye Trainer before retiring the side. Carl Hubble came into pitch in the bottom of the seventh for the Nationals, walking Lou Gehrig and allowing a single to Jimmy Dykes, but again keeping the Americans from scoring. Lefty Grove allowed just a single in the eighth before coming into the ninth. Bill Terry grounded out, Wally Berger lined out to right, and Tony Cuccinello, a pinch hitter, struck out. The American League had won its first summer classic, with Ruth Homer being the difference. The exhibition was a complete success and would return next year.